everyone, this is Mike Check 95 with another Mike Check Productions, Mike Check Movie Review. Once again, that we are also still continuing the random movie reviews and whatnot, and kind of taking the focus away from the movie series for the time being to kind of rest my brain. But uh, if you do enjoy this review, as you can see the picture behind me, give us a like, a share, and a subscribe to the channel. Join the madness. Follow us on Discord, Facebook, Twitter, ouch, sorry, theory, Instagram, the works. As the picture behind me shows, I reviewed the film Small Soldiers today. Weirdly enough, before I get into my actual thoughts, um, I've talked to quite a few people over the years, and not that many people know about this film or its existence, which kind of surprises me. Personally, because I grew up watching this film as a kid. Let's get into the numbers for Small Soldiers. Toy Story for Adults. Critics rate this film a 4.8 out of 10, while audiences rate this film a 4.5 out of 10. I'm gonna go out on the limb right now. I'm not gonna reveal my rating right now for the film. I honestly do not agree with the numbers of this movie. I feel like this film didn't get enough attention and love that I feel like it should have because again, I am kind of defending this film. It is one of my favorites to this day. I just don't understand why it got such a low rating. Uh, the budget of this film is $40 million, and the box office for this film was $87.5 million. So a lot of parents took their kids to watch this movie in theaters, and this movie, I know for sure, sold toys, because I know I picked some up when I was a kid. Pros, cons, comments, per usual. Um, I honestly forgot that this was a DreamWorks film, which kind of adds to my weird DreamWorks verse theory in my own brain. Kind of funny that in my weird DreamWorks verse brain, saying that this film is in the same universe as uh, Shrek and The Ring, I just got the biggest what the fuck glare. <laughs> Think about this. Shrek fighting military grade toys while dealing with Samara more Samara from the ring. That would be a box office sell. Ain't that right, Fury? You stink. I am trying to record a review and you already little butt won't stop fucking with my light cord. More so I should say Toby Maguire Spider-Man has a run for his money because Kirsten Dunst is in this film. She portrays a I guess an older kid that's in high school, I'm assuming. I thought it was a little cheesy, of course it's 1998, but that there was not only one, but two Wilhelm screams in this movie. I had to write something down about this because the Wilhelm scream is like one of the easiest sound effects to get for a film. It's the cheesiest one to use, and it's known for years for its iconicness. There's a scene in the film where the Gorgonites are watching TV and there happens to be WWF on the screen which I kind of was like oh crap I don't remember that at all now it's time to get to the pros and the cons and this film was very granted I have a very very big spot in my heart for this film but I have to critique all the films as an actual movie reviewer so there are there are some pros and some cons for this movie um, I'm gonna go through the pros of this film the good things about it um, in the very beginning, when they showed the building process of the toys for both the Commando Elite and the Gorgonized, I thought that was really cool how they actually showed the whole process of putting them together and everything. That also kind of had a bit of a Terminator vibe to it. I'll get more into my Terminator stuff when it comes to that. From my childhood, the soundtrack for the original soundtrack and all the songs that they picked for this movie was very memorable. There's a lot of songs that I'll hear at like work or like on the radio and I'll be like, hey look, I remember that from Small Soldiers and I get weird looks because nobody knows what Small Soldiers is. The use of animatronics in this film, I applaud the fact that they used animatronics in this movie and encourage it a lot and I liked that they didn't focus on CGI 100% the entire time and that there were some scenes that it was a lot of practical effects, so that was actually really cool. The idea of like family businesses in this movie with the uh, son helping keep an eye on the father's toy store. I thought that was kind of neat how they kind of tied that in with like family traditions and family businesses and everything. It's just, it's, it's kind of neat. The fact that the toys were voice activated and they were able to communicate through like normal voice lines that they were programmed to say and then they start 
building more of the vocabulary and actually generating new conversations and new phrases and words to say as they go along throughout the movie that's actually really neat but it's also kind of scary I'll get into that when I get to the cons when I was a kid this film definitely convinced me to buy the toys I didn't get all of them but I got a good majority of them and this film was definitely made for kids for 1998 for this kind of movie granted comparing it to nowadays it, of course it's not the greatest but for 1998 standards for a kids film the CGI was actually pretty good for the time period. I mean, you could tell some of the glaring moments for the CGI definitely stood out over everything else in the, in the film. The fact that uh, the Gorgonites and the Commando Elite, as the movie went on, they got like battle scars and damage and everything, and they were able to retain that and keep that with the, con with the uh, flow of the story and the continuity of it was actually really neat that they paid attention to that. And also the fact that the Commando Elite and the Gorgonites were also able to repair themselves and each other throughout the film too. That was actually really neat as well. The uh, Commando Elite weapon building montage in the garage, I thought that was kind of neat showing that with more of the programming as they went on they were able to make stuff from out of scratch and turn them into like actual lethal weapons and just is showing that montage was actually really cool along with the building montage when they turned all the Barbie dolls into like uh, reinforcements and soldiers for the Commando Elite was also kind of neat, but again, that's another thing I'll get into when it comes to the cons for other reasons. Normally when it comes to movies, I always complain about the runtime because I always feel like when it comes to a movie, a perfect runtime for a film is about probably about two hours, two and a half hours, but since this was a kid's movie, this was a perfect length for a kid's film. It got the point across. It was enough time to keep a kid's attention. It was very jumpy all over the place for a kid's brain. That was fantastic when it came to that. When it came to the idea of the toys being like um, self-aware, like artificial intelligence, or as they said, their own intelligence, this was basically Terminator and Toy Form. The tie-in with that, as the film went on, uh, Chip Hazard got some damage later on in the film and one of his eyes got damaged pretty bad and that kind of gave me like a callback to Terminator as the Terminator in his films always gets one of his eyes damaged revealing the uh, T-800 skeleton underneath the skin that's kind of cool that they did a lot of uh, nods to Termin Terminator. I believe that Tommy Lee Jones as uh, Chip Hazard he did a really great job. He convinced me that he can be a good uh, military general um, I'm pretty, how did you get up there? Come here. This is how my reviews are going to get more interesting. With her, because she won't leave stuff alone. And earlier, as I said about the whole the whole Barbie doll scene with making the uh, army and everything, and on top of going back to the uh, company that made the toys that Chip went back to that place, actually kind of somehow miraculously landed in a little river that somehow guided him straight to the factory that made all the toys, which I found that very convenient, but I didn't really put that as a con. But the fact that they were able to take one like microchip from the head of one of the toys and turn that into like a multitude of like a bunch of other like army soldiers was really cool that they showed that with the whole Barbie doll army scene. And then later on they come back with more Commando Elite like copies of each other. It's cool, but it's also kind of horrifying, which leads me into a good segue into one of my cons. It's it's story driven. It helps push the story along, but at the same time, it also goes with the idea of like Terminator, them being more self-aware of their surroundings and everything, and getting their own intelligence. Military program toys with self-aware AI. It's a good idea on paper. It's a good idea on movies, but in a real life situation, absolutely fucking horrifying. What if the wrong person saw that and got that idea? Like, it's been since 1998 since this film came out, so of course I highly doubt that actually fucking happened. Imagine you look out your window and there's an army of toys that are, are programmed by a military chip trying to break into your house. I found it a little weird that when Alan like got all the toys from the truck driver that when he was bringing all the stand-up stand -up cutouts from the truck, how all of them were, all of them were like 
cartoony, like drawn on them and everything, like they were designed for a coloring book, and then Chip Hazard's one cutout was lifelike and actually looked real. It was weird. I guess that's mainly because like Chip Hazard was like the main selling point for all the toys. I would think like if you're gonna make like cutouts for all the toys, make them all like coloring book cut like drawn on cutouts and or make them all look realistic and everything. Don't just make one realistic and the rest straight out of a coloring book. I thought that was weird. Granted, it was like character development, but I uh, didn't really like the fact that how rude that Alan was to Archer in the beginning. Like, being like a snobby teenager and everything. I get it that he's a troubled kid and he turns his life around in a matter of like a week or maybe a couple days because of all this, all the, this whole incident, but I mean, it's just, I feel like it's kind of overplayed, but it is what it be. Going back to one of the points that I mentioned earlier, the logic of the science of how they built all the uh, equipment to recreate the Barbie doll army didn't make any sense whatsoever by just looking at it, because they didn't really explain how they did it. It just showed that, hey, look, they did this, 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 and this. Electricity. I would want like a better explanation of showing how they do it and how it was built, how it was all put together, and then show the process instead of just they can do this, they can do this. They did a lot of that in the movie, like the weapons and everything. Well, the weapon montage is a little bit better because they actually showed them how they did it, but this one was just kind of like thrown together. It just it didn't make any fucking sense. It was it is a very cheesy film and it's very outdated when it comes to some of the comedy, but this is kind of a half con because I still thought it was pretty funny. It's again, I, I enjoyed it as a kid. I would probably show this to my kid uh, when, if, when, when, uh, whenever they grow up. This is one thing that I kind of had a huge problem with and I mentioned it twice once during the movie and once after. The fact that after Brad had dropped off Christy at her parents' house, he tries to go back in after he hears her being attacked. He has his pants caught on fire, and he runs away in his underwear. But when Christy and Alan were escaping the house, they clearly run past Brad's bike, who's still in the driveway. Number one, they didn't even acknowledge the bike that was there. And number two, they didn't really acknowledge the fact of like showing any worry of what happened to Brad, where was Brad, nobody gives a shit about Brad. And on top of that, like, he, Brad just kind of left his bike there, he just ran home. No one else on that block in the final fight scene didn't really acknowledge or was aware of the fucking war going on outside at one or two houses normal scenario that the entire block would be freaking the fuck out as like what the hell's going on in this film it's just two houses of the two families being attacked i would say there's probably almost too many cheesy one-liners there's a lot but one of the one of the ones at the very end kind of like stuck out in my head uh one of the replicas of uh nick nitro came around the corner of like one of his like nail gun like vehicles <laughs> And he starts shooting at the dad and the kid, or, or Alan and his dad. And he's like, what's the matter, kid? You don't like Nine Inch Nails? And the fact that the global tech company just used money to cover it up. Like, someone's gonna find out. Someone's going to know what happened. There was too much commotion going on, and there's too much leftover damage to ignore what happened goes back to how the whole block didn't know what was going on. They were like, oh, you're being too loud, I can't sleep. Now it's time to get into my rating. Like I said in the very beginning, with the critics giving it a 4.8 and the audience is giving it a 4.5, I really think this film didn't get enough love as it should have gotten because it's one of my favorites, the favorite films. If I were to give a fanboy rating, it'd be like a 9 or an 8 out of 10 because it's one of my childhood favorites. But we're here to critique movies. We're here to rate them by their performance 
and how they look and how the story goes and if anything makes sense with how everything kind of piles together with some of my back and forthness on some things here and there I would say this film if I were to be real gets a 6.9 out of 10 for like a real actual like critical rating for me it is higher than the actual critics and the audience scores but that's the number I'm sticking to because I feel like this film is a lot better than what people put it out to be. It's what I, it's one of those films, what I would call a sleeper film. A film that didn't get much tension, a film that didn't get much love, a film that went under the radar, but later on it could turn into a cult classic, which I'm pretty sure that this film is a cult classic. So 6.9 for me and Small Soldiers. If you enjoyed this review, be sure to like, share, subscribe, join the madness, follow us on Discord, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, like I always say. Keep an eye out for another random movie until we jump into another series. This is Mike Check 95 and make sure that when you buy a toy, it's not programmed by the government, or the military, or if it's a fucking Terminator. Signing up.